stop being afraid of what can go wrong in your life and start putting your positive energy towards all that can go right with this beautiful thought i welcome you all for one more exciting session this is dr nidhi shrivastav associate professor iiebm your moderator for today's session so let's begin hands on plugs on and minds on so before introducing the guest very quickly i will brief you about the flow of the session session will be of an hour as you already know 40 minutes first 40 minutes will be knowledge sharing and rest 20 minutes will be question and answer you can post the questions in the chat box which will be addressed at the end of the session you know a project is complete when it starts working for you rather than you working for it confused no issues don't worry at all because our next guest is going to solve all your queries on project management mr buddhaditya banerji so let me introduce mr buddhaditya banerji he is a self driven professional with more than 12 years of rigorous experience in project management cloud technologies involved in project management reports contractual reporting dc migration to cloud technologies cloud resource management and maintenance with companies like infosys webpro and essential basically he is a computer science engineer and is presently working with tata consultancy services as cloud technology technical lead he has been awarded for being part of the transition team creating knowledge documents and for performing end to end transition of the project from pipeline to production So without taking much time let me welcome Mr Buddhaditya Banerjee over to you Mr Banerjee Good morning all uh, hope you all guys are doing good today so i am buddhaditya banerji and today for next uh, an hour or so i will be uh, the guest lecturer or we, we can say that buddy of you all so let us move ahead uh, with the discussion and i want this to be an informative discussion as well as because uh, i know that you guys are uh, starting your career with the business management uh, so it should be informative as well as it should be uh, like educative so let us start that and i will be opening the slides now all right so as um, like nidhi informed that i uh, i am part of the project management as well as cloud migration and uh, like dc management so i will be talking with you about the project management and site and roads uh, toward the business of project management so what exactly is the project management so anything which we deliver to the customer right end to end that will be a project for us for the client it will be the deliverables which we will be providing to them so moving forward all right so we all know that uh, uh, in india so india is the its and the services giant of the world uh we have a question here like why it is so why in all over the world india is known as the its and service giant because these are the aspects which are in front of you we have produced world class leaders we have produced the skilled entrepreneurs and business managers skilled and cheap labor we are the hub to business innovation and seamless service delivery also we are privileged to have the largest english speaking class with world class communication skill now what is in it what is in our genes which prepare us to become a world class leader so we all know right we indians are very good at selling the product like a one 5 rupees pen we can sell it as uh, 20 rupees 
it is not in a bad way it is in a good way because end of the day the deliverables are getting delivered to the customer and on the other hand uh, we are earning our bread and butter so with this aspect we have created lot of world class leaders as you are able to see on your screen these are the few there are many more like indra nui and all so uh, we are very privileged to be born in this country and when you are moving towards initiating or starting your career or uh, with your job career with a, a great institute like iabm so you will be able to learn few of the aspects so how to become a world class leader i want you all to think after taking uh, the uh, after starting the business with iia ebm uh, how to become the world class leader or how to be a skilled entrepreneur or a business manager or how to innovate or how to provide a seamless service delivery all right okay so now we are in a phase in our uh, career or we can say in our life which is divided into pre covid and post covid world right so none of our presentation or none of our discussion can end without discussing with the covid 19 pandemic and what is the current situation and what is expected from us as a new uh, like as a going to be business tycoon or a going to be a management professional or what will be the derivatives which i have to provide to the country or to our clients first of all this is the current situation of india or the world where uh, like we all the whole world is suffering with this pandemic where we are into standstill so what does that mean to the business infrastructure or the business environment that is the next slide industrial sector right in india if we say that the manufacturing is in standing idle we can say about the rice milling sector because that was the biggest in india Uh, that is reported dropped by half because of the difference between uh, the generation of the crop and the consumption in several sectors including automotive msmes and all is down because raw materials are not getting moved from one place to another and there is a demand supply chain gap and we all know that china is Uh, uh, like the hub for few of the uh, physical infrastructure like the machineries and all so the supply chain is completely stopped from china and the rest of the world migrant workers are uh, is the problem here like because uh, now we all know uh, it is all over the news now that migrant workers have been moved from the uh, large uh, in the large number from the uh states where they were working to their hometown that is also one problem the movement of materials as i already discussed and then manufacturing msmes right uh, they almost exclusively supply uh, like other industries like the msmes who prepare uh, steel or uh, who prepare bricks or who prepare any, any of the other thing tiles and all those things there is no demand as of now because the complete manufacturing industry the complete industrial infrastructure of the world is stand still so these are the challenges now in front of us in it sector we all know that it sector is a backbone right if we have a business to support that business we use it like for a business we need servers for the servers we need server managers storages networks and all those things so if we have a standstill in business then there will be a problem of course with the it sector as well so the it sector is also suffering with all this type of pandemic situation which is hampering the world as of now okay now uh, what now or what is the path ahead that means restarting business is a mega challenge that is the question which we have to ask ourselves we are starting our career uh, with iabm 
and we have to uh, discuss among ourselves so how to restart the business and what are the challenges so some of the challenges i have put it in here when restrictions are lifted the market is ex expected to be very tight right and extremely cash constraints simple i have 10 rupees extra i had 10 rupees extra i wanted to invest that 10, 10 rupees to something to some business or something but because of this pandemic situation now because i don't know what my uh, like what is my future so i will try to held back that 10 rupees so that is one challenge manpower is the constraint as the ms uh, so the msmes indicated that 30 to 70 percent of their pre-covid workspace might have migrated back to their hometown then timely supply because uh, the state borders the international borders all the borders are on halt so this is also one challenge generating demand as i told that if i have a, if i have 10 rupees so rather than investing it somewhere i will be opting to save it to myself for the future now what is the road ahead so everything is not gloomy uh, we have a new normal now that is the post pandemic normal some good news here now e-commerce business is booming simple right e-commerce business facilitate us uh, to help ourselves to be touchless or it will be a contactless uh, like transaction whatever we do we open our, our app we uh, like order the goods the goods will come to our doorstep we already will be paying uh, online the people so they will uh, keep uh, whatever we have ordered to our doorstep we will take the uh, the deliverable so because of this e-commerce business is booming and e-commerce business is driven by the management associates that, that means you guys so you guys believe me have a bigger role to pay, play in post pandemic situation due to contactless transitions or transactions e-wallet industry is on a surge that means rather than paying cash rather than paying via uh, uh, via the card and all those things so which will be a contact full transaction mode we usually now go with the paytms we usually go uh, with google pay and all other uh, uh, like the contact or e, e uh, like the e wallet industry so this is also one aspect which is booming as of now innovation and strategize the business with modern application interface that means we have to build a interface or the interface are getting started to build with the modern technologies which facilitate us to get the cashless or get the contactless seamless delivery mode so as the new people we have the ownership to strategize or strategize our business in a way which will use to enhance the modern app interfaces remote world culture as we all know we so the remote work culture actually it reduces the carbon blueprint like because we know that the offices which are built there uh, that consume electricity that consume ac and all those things so doing working remotely or creating a culture of uh, working uh, remotely will facilitate us to reduce the carbon blueprint to the world as well as cost to the company as well as it is very helpful to be a contactless environment all right so now we will be starting with the project management uh, that is the uh, like main aspect what what i wanted to be discussed with you guys so before that i have one small video of four minutes which i found uh, very helpful when i was uh, like browsing uh, uh, like some of the videos there so i found it very informative so i will play uh, this video and we will be discussing ahead uh, post the completion of this video Hi, 
I'm Rona, Deputy Everything Officer at SONA. In this series of videos, we'll be looking at the fundamentals of project management. We'll define the important terms, discuss project management life cycles and methodologies, and look at some of the more common project management techniques. To kick off, we're looking at 12 key project management terms that I think everyone involved in projects should know. I'll never forget sitting in my first project meeting and feeling completely out of my depth as I could barely follow the conversation that flowed around me. Words like RAG, Gantt and Triple Constraint had me feeling like I dropped into an alien environment and we were waiting for the spaceship to come and take me away. So let's get started with the first term, RAG status. This stands for red, amber and green status, which is pretty obvious once you figure it out. It's one of the most common terms and is used to indicate if something is on or off track. Just like a traffic like red means there's something seriously wrong, hey, stop the bus, I need to get off. Amber, that might be something that needs to be looked at, but not enough to make you want to stop. Green, everything's great, the project can keep on going. Number two, work breakdown structure or WBS. This is one of the first deliverables of the project, if not the first. It's where you break your project into manageable chunks and have some logic around it. You've got things like your tasks, estimated time and the people that you want to use on it. Normally I do it as a team activity, so I get all the team together and have post-it notes that you can stick on walls and move around so that you can all interact and get something that makes logical sense. Number three, Gantt chart or schedule. This is a specific way to visualise the work that's needed to do to deliver the project. This falls out of the work that you've done with the work breakdown structure. It's taking everything you've done and putting it into logical flow with links between tasks. You add some more detail at this point, so you may have estimated start and end dates, estimated duration, the amount of effort needed to do the job, as well as relative progress. Number four is triple constraint. This is the absolute bane of a project manager's life. It's represented in a number of ways, but usually as a triangle. You'll have cost, time and scope on the vertices and quality in the middle. The premise is you can't change one of the vertices without affecting the other two. You'll very often hear the phrase, pick any two because you can't have them all. Number five is methodology. This is the framework you use to manage the project. It could be PRINCE2, PMBOK, Agile or a combination of them all. I've seen a number of projects recently where they're using PRINCE2, for example, to manage the actual project management and Agile to manage any development that's happening. So you pick the methodology that works best for the particular project that you're working on. Number six is business case. This is the fundamental document for your project. It's where you're presenting your case for actually doing the work and contains a lot of key information. It could be written by a business analyst and it goes up to your project committee to be approved and if it's signed off then your project can start. Number seven is requirements. These are things that must happen or must be produced by the project. It can be anything from the new IT system must be able to integrate with EDFS single sign-on or the cake must be egg-free. They're usually grouped into three main types, business, stakeholder and solution. Number eight is risk. This is something that may or may not happen, but if it does happen, it will have a good or bad effect on the project. The risks may or may not be within your control. Number nine is issue. This is something that's happening on your project right now, like a big old burning fire. You may or may not have identified it as a risk, but it's something that needs to be treated now. Number 10 is milestone. This is an anchor point on the project management timeline. It's usually found on the Gantt chart and is represented by a diamond shape. It has absolutely no impact on the project schedule whatsoever, it's just there as a visual reference. Number 11 is stakeholder. This is someone or a group of someone's who will be or who think they will be directly or indirectly affected by what the project is supposed to be delivering. The last term is steering committee. This is a group of people that have been tasked with providing strategic guidance to the project and are there to support the project manager. Any big decisions that are outside the agreed tolerances need to be raised here. So these are some of the key terms that I think everyone involved with projects should know. Hopefully you found it useful. There are obviously loads more, so let us know in the comments. Yeah, so, all right, guys, so I think uh, the slides or the video was helpful to you all. 
so we will move ahead with our discussion now all right so from what will, what was actually the take from that video is if we are a product manager right if we are a project manager we have to deliver something to our client so what we are delivering either we are delivering some deliverables or we are delivering uh, like the server management or we are delivering the software we are delivering whatever so the four key things when we are delivering something to the customer is the deliverable should be on time the deliverable should be on budget and we should meet the goal that has been agreed upon now as a project manager what we have to learn is we have to learn to prepare a project management bid which will not overcommit or which will not undercommit that means if it is overcommitted then we will not be able to cope up with the budget suppose we have a 10 rupee of budget of our company and the client is looking for a 8 rupee but we have given the complete 10 rupee to them like we will produce uh, the software whatever you are required or uh, um, and uh, this is the budget that is 10 rupees that means we don't have any escape point like if i exhaust the 10 rupees or if i have uh, over time the project then the complete rupees now are uh, like project came from green to amber to red so we have to manage all the things we have to manage the scope we have to manage the time we have to manage the cost with the quality which customer is looking for as well as if it is a long term project right like the it projects infra projects these are the long term project which where we have to manage a relationship with the customer the quality is uh, the main aspect here what is the project it is a activity which is temporarily having a start and end time which can change or which can shift it is unique it brings about changes it matures with time has known elements which create risk see in the world uh, we uh, this is the correct this is the proper example here right 3 months back nobody thought that we will be sitting here in this position where uh, everything is online complete everything is contactless so we were not aware of that so that is risk all right so there will be some known risks there will be some unknown risks so as a business manager or as a product manager or project manager we should be ready for all type of risks all right so before uh, jumping into the project management first of all we have to bid prof for a project right so for bidding for a project we should do lot of research and planning what are the researches what are the plans research and planning in the sense we have to uh, like find the nerve of the customer nerve of the client like what they are looking from us what services they are looking for us whether i am the best player for that we have to capture the best team uh, which is available in the market so that we can serve the customer better we have to strategize strategize in the sense the deliverables whatever we are giving that should be within time and how to make the strategy to give it on time and if there is any changes of requirement from the customer how to work up work for them and the record right the record in the sense see the brand name is the record that means we have already served the customer uh, as uh, like like we have served lot of big customer that means our record shows that yes we are the capable people how we can build the record as a project manager you have to deliver the project successfully to the customers one customer successfully delivered two customer successfully delivered guys with this two customer you can build a database of multiple customers in your company and you will be a successful project manager or delivery manager in that sense like that you have to prepare a bid in a way where you have to do a business plan business plan in the sense what will 
i get from the customer when i deliver the product and whatever we are getting from that we have to earn the profit as well as we have to run the project as well as we have to mitigate the risks so we have to make a proper business plan and uh, you are in a good hands you are uh, with uh, you are going to join a premier business group here so uh, you will be able to learn gradually how to prepare your business plans here then value with price and we uh, so this is the success mantra for indians right we are very good at value and pricing the value which we deliver to the customer and with the pricing which we deliver it is like uh, unmatchable or unparalleled so uh, and also the time management and the resource management that is very important guys because the people who will be working as a team right if they are not happy as a project manager i will suffer if the project management and the complete project is suffering that means client is not getting the proper deliverables which they are looking for so these three aspects are very necessary at the nascent stage or early stage of the business bidding now the steps step is simple uh, when you have uh, when you created a business plan you create a bid document you submit the bid and then uh, if you are the chosen one suppose the customer has chosen uh, uh, 10 uh, 10 companies now you have to go there and you have to present the bid how you are going to work on the challenges which are being thrown or you, on your way by the by the client and you have to be more presentative in that all right so i have uh, just uh, when you awarded the contract right when uh, a customer has aw awarded you the contract these are the five steps which i already have discussed after that project planning when you got the bidding congratulations you have got the bidding now you have to plan the project how to churn out uh, the profit from this as well as how to give the value addition to the customer so these are the prom uh, the these are the prom uh, the common project terms in the video you might have uh, seen almost all of these uh, the deliverables the milestones the tasks the risks the issues gan charts stakeholders and all all right who are the stakeholders we as the service provider are the stakeholders the people who are taking our service those are also the stakeholders so whomsoever are affected with our project are the stakeholders here okay so work breakdown structure as a project manager guys this is very important uh, for success of the project that means the hierarchy of task you have to appoint a uh, proper people in the proper places that means a business guy should be taking care of the business related things a technical guy should be taken care of the technicality related of things a network person the people who are good at presentation they should be on call with the customers so all these type of things will be the work breakdown structure and the final work breakdown structure is called the base work breakdown structure that means when you have completely formulated the project now you are good to go with the deliverables to the customer now risks and issues right so risks are everywhere issues are everywhere some of the issues are known some of the issues are not known guys as a good business manager or as a good project manager the gap between known group a uh, known risk and unknown risk should minimize initial stages if you find out okay these are the risks then the uh, approximity or the percentage of uh, like the profitability from the project is more for your company so as a business manager you have to work towards risk assessment in the beginning itself so that you can manage the cost you can manage the people properly 
because i am from an it background i will give you a, a wonderful example we have a customer i will not uh, take them their name but they had some issues with the networking that means the cabling were messed up and all these things were messed up as a project manager uh, we had taken the incident dumps for past one year when we were not into the picture uh, we had analyzed and we found out that there is an issue with the data center architecture like that means there are network fluctuations because of network fluctuation the servers were not responding properly we were not getting the proper speed and all those things at the initial stage only we had created a risk chart risk diagram we have produced it to them they acknowledged that we worked on that within three months uh, the issue was re rectified with all the stakeholders uh, in the picture now what does that means customer is happy that they had given the bid or they had given the project to a company who can take care of their burning issues second that reduces my incident count that means with less resources i will be able to survive that means customer is getting proper uh, like like the proper response from us customer is getting the proper results as well as i can create profitability profitability to my company so this is a good example so how uh, like project manager can manage the project into green amber and red now the gantt chart it is just like uh, when we were in child stage right uh, we had the timetable right our, our our teacher were telling us uh, to prepare a timetable uh, like when we wake up and when we go to bed in between how to manage the time what are the things which we have to do today and for tomorrow how to be ready so uh, this is a chart view and i know that you will be uh, you will be learning all these things uh, in the recent years uh, because you are now joining uh, the great organization behind you so you will be learning all these things uh, in brief now so a successful project manager the basic things which are required is to manage the resources to manage the time to manage the money and most importantly scope that means you are a builder right you are a builder and you take charge of preparing a big park but you don't have expertise in that right uh, you are a builder you don't have expertise in building the parks and all now you have to bring in people from the market and if that is costly then your project will not be profitable so you have to define the scope whether i will be able to build the park within the money which i have like that we have to initiate the bidding so all these items are interrelated guys each must be managed effectively if resources are managed properly but resources are highly paid then money aspect will be a problem if resources are not good then we will not be able to deep dive into the problems then time will be the problem we will not be able to deliver uh, the project to the customer properly so these are the aspects so we have to make balancing act between all this project and this is uh, this will define the success of a project and in turn a successful project manager all right so now uh, we have come into very important slides which are the six essential project manager skills so leadership will be the one that means leading from the front that means if there is a burning challenge burning problem not leave your team alone as a project manager jump into it as a project manager work with your team to reach into uh, a result or reach into a resolution like that your team will have proper respect towards you and with respect comes the uh, the leadership that means you are owning the problem and you are leading your team towards a successful solution 
next one is communication guys like we have to uh, be a good communicator that means we have to communicate the challenges to our client so i will tell you one example from uh, my illustrious career one of our client right uh, they had uh, given the project to us and we were managing the project there was a big outage there because of some uh, uh, like some physical issues now what happens is we started working on that but we didn't inform the client about that that means when business came in the morning they were not able to get internet they were out of uh, like their wifi is were not working they had escalated it then the customer or the business came to us and they stated that guys i know you guys were working very hard and you guys are working very hard but where is the communication why you didn't communicate to us so a business manager or a project manager is responsible for communicating any or every issue to the client which is required to be told to them as well as uh, a bond between the team like all the team should be aware of what is going on within themselves next one is planning of course everything is planning right you plan your career when you join uh, a business institute you plan so in next two years in next three years what you are going to do so planning is necessary for your personal improvement as well as in achieving the business goals so of course so uh, so there are different type of planning traditional planning agile planning i know you will be uh, learning it in uh, uh, like in details in your days to come just a small example if you are a builder your planning will be traditional that means the plan which you build initially will not be changing later because then we you invest with the bricks and in you invest with the tiles and whatever requirement is there but agile way of planning will be a project like a software project today there is a project requirement but now customer is coming back due to covid 19 i want paytm to be added to the business wallet i want uh, like google pay to be added to the uh, to the business wallet so now there is a change in between so that is the agile way where the changes can be done in between as well in the project life cycle so uh, this is the stage of planning next scheduling right so the resource organization and perform the work and the time frame that is the scheduling initial uh, uh, so the initial phase because i am from it background i will tell about information technology when we when we get a project in our kitty first of all we need more smes who need more subject matter experts so that we can uh uh like we can overcome the initial jerky phase of the project after few months when our project is getting stabilized then okay then we can uh, bring in new guys and we we, we can work uh, into the uh, triangular way oh, okay so as a project manager you should know the triangle method of business recruitment that means the lower level of the triangle is broad right that means less experienced people should be more and if we up into the ladder uh, then the triangle tip will be the most experienced person that means he will be the mentor and if we move down the ladder that will be the success mantra of a project where uh, people with uh, uh, like like uh, with a uh, medium and less experience will be more and people with 10 plus experience like uh, um, will be the tip of the triangle so this way we have to schedule the work we have to schedule uh, the complete uh, project management life cycle next is the risk management now as i told you risk is everywhere so how to mitigate the risk we have to monitor properly we have to bring in awareness to the team we have to identify that means if there are multiple incidents every day for some of the issue we cannot ignore that as a project manager as a project manager we should know how to find out the red cycles of our project and how to overcome the red cycle with proper expertise 
so that is risk management then cost management of course it is very important when there is risk there is more cost right so the cost control resource planning this is a complete circle if you are able to see here cost control controlling changes to the project budget as as i told you initial stages there will be more smes as the project goes into maturity state we can remove few of the uh, more experienced people we can bring in newbies and um, we can uh, uh, like uh, do the cost control there resource planning people equipment material initially as a builder i need uh, uh, like more cement and uh, like more things after that uh, when our project will be or when the building is built now the interior side for interiors we need woods like we need tiles and we need all those things so this is resource planning how to manage people how uh, people how to manage equipment how to manage material like that cost estimation and cost budgeting with that we have to be uh, ready with the budget like monthly budget quarterly budget uh, half yearly budget yearly budget so as a uh, good business manager we have to manage the cost because paisa right money speaks then value addition guys it is very important aspect because when our uh, project and for the long term project this is very useful see everybody is doing what client is telling right if client want their server to be 24/7 up everybody is telling that okay i will do it every project manager will say that okay i will deliver you that what is value addition value addition is automation value addition will say uh, to the client okay your services are up and running 24 per 7 but if tomorrow there is an issue we will detect it well in advance we will give you this extra right we will give you this thing extra we will give you this product extra with this application end of the day we all know right uh, when there is buy one get one free be it in movie tickets be within uh, be it in pizza and whatever we will be waiting for that offer and then we will opt to pay for that so value addition is very important aspect in our project management life all right so uh, that is it which i wanted to uh, like tell you guys or which i wanted to speak in front of you i will be leaving you with a uh, with a few of the uh, like quotes which was uh, told by uh, uh, like brilliant people brilliant leader of business managers like steve job jack welch and all so it is in front of you it is not about money it is about the people you have and how you are led right with less people if you uh, so uh, the formula is simple if you are happy with a work Uh, uh, uh with your work right if you are happy with your team with less money also you can survive if you are not happy then with more money also you will try to opt out of that organization or you will be opting out of that project so it is everything about uh, like people who surrounds you and how you are dealt with all right so uh, these are few of the quotes which i wanted to share with you guys so uh, hopefully this will help you in, uh, in 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 your near future thank you that's all from my end well that was a really uh, informative session budaditya we really thoroughly enjoyed it and i must tell you actually compliment you you have received a lot of questions like lot of questions on project management uh to begin with um the first question uh is from one of the student uh, she wants to ask what are the important stages of project management if you can just highlight sure so uh important stages in the sense nascent stage where when we are bidding it right when we are bidding for the project we got the project yeah the project is with us now but 
now the initial stage of the project where we will not have to work for value addition we have to work for stabilizing the project so initial stage is stabilizing the project next stage of the project is providing the deliverables as uh, like quoted uh, to the customer when our project is stabilized then we will deliver it as it is quoted and when we uh, like deliver the customer with the quotes now come the next stage that is value addition now we are delivering the customer what they have asked for now what better we can give it to them like buy one get one free if you uh, purchase this application from us we will give you this application as a bonus to you so these are the few uh, project management stages right the second question uh, is asked uh, that is e-commerce operation safe especially in covid-19 situation as the project comes in contact with many people while you know the entire process so what's your take on that uh i will move to one of the slides here mm, one second all right so as you are able to see here right e e-commerce business uh, like they have created few of the innovations like dmart right so uh, so they are bringing in the wagon culture where you order we will deliver it at your doorstep mm -hmm. so as a business manager as a project manager you, we should be ready with the innovative idea which can cope up with any challenge which will be in front of us like the atms right we uh, usually nowadays we are into pandemic situation so uh, we might be getting the vans with the atms where we can go and we can uh, transact the money which we require or the airport authority of india they are uh, doing the uh, like, like the onboarding which is seamless that means you will not have to come into contact everything will be uh, like artificial and nowadays there is a new norm where your face will be your boarding pass so mm -hmm. now we as a project manager in uh, like airport authority of india we should make sure that our team is publishing or preparing an application which is apt to do the job so these are the few challenges in front of us and we can mitigate with the proper project management processes right uh when the next question is what is the scope of project management for a pgdm student especially post covid uh see project management scope is everywhere as a business leader and uh, we all know it is in news that we are now trying to bid uh, the uh, like like the industries also from china to india right so we are a thumbs up country where uh, like lot of companies want to invest out of china to india all right so as a project manager uh, we have an enormous job on our shoulders where we can be the real drive factor behind the prosperity of our country so we should think in that aspect now as a project manager we can be a business leader of tomorrow post covid as an indian i see lot of opportunities which will be coming in front of us right right okay uh, the next question is which things one should keep in mind while uh, doing project bidding all right so the project bidding all right uh, so we all know it is a it, it is simple if we ask a business from a front person we should think putting ourselves on their shoes that means if i am the client i want to pay you less and i want to get more work from you so now i know how my client is thinking so now i have to make sure that whatever they are looking for i have proper resources to complete that task 
first mm -hmm. and second whatever uh, like is the bid which i am going to propose to them that should be lesser than others right. so we have to make sure that the cost to our company is less as well as the cost to the client is less when we are bidding to them as well as the time constraint we are working uh, we are giving them the service in lesser time than the others so cost management time management as well as resource management these three things and proper research guys that is very important proper research in the sense a company that is our client which is coming to us for business we have to do proper research that with whom they were uh, they were doing business previously and what were the challenges they were facing at that time and how can we mitigate and how can we get value addition to them so mm -hmm. proper planning with all these x factors will be able to get us a successful bid okay the next question is very interesting and i also want to know this when do you actually come to know that any of the project is going off track okay so see there are few aspects when uh, we can find out as a project manager first of all we are the nerve of a project that right. means whatever is happening on day to day basis hmm. should we should be aware of that that means if there is an issue i am the first person who is aware of that issue then i should get back into the contract and i should find out how that issue is affecting the contract of mine end of the day the end of the day that business is mine right to make the client happy so if there are issues and if we are not able to mitigate that on time and if they initially the customer is raising lot of concerns hmm. now i will be able to say okay my uh, project jet was green but now it has come to amber if i have if i am not able to mitigate it as soon as possible then it can go to red second aspect for mitigating that risk if i have to bring in lot of smes that is a cost to the company right now my budget is going into negative so what is the burden which we can cope up with that also we have to think so okay. this is a circle so as a business manager our duty is to make the client happy with our company in an earning mode and uh, the people who are working with us should be happy right okay uh, so uh, as we are running out of time i will ask you the last question because there are many we won't be able to address all uh the last question is uh, how do you manage remote teams and outsourced resources all right so this is very important question and it is valid in post pandemic situation because most of the it people are working uh, uh like from uh, work from home and all those things right to manage them we should make sure that we have a daily hurdle with the team at the start of the business day we should make sure that we have divided our work properly also as a business manager i should make sure or or a project manager i should make sure that we do have the proper application which will take care of the time management of the users or the people who are uh, who are working with us so these are the few things like division of uh, like with the gan chart or whatever uh, like technology you want to use you use but divide your work properly among your teammates and end of the day make one more hurdle and find out that where we are lagging and what all we are able to achieve from uh, uh, from today's work so like that we can manage our today as well as we will be able to manage our work tomorrow right well thank you so much mr banerji for taking time out and solving all the queries of students especially because students are really unsure the existing batches unsure about the placements the new batches again concerned about the placements how the situation will be 
you know so thank you so much for uh, taking your time out and sharing uh, your knowledge on project management with the students i hope uh, one situation will be good good we will meet in campus for sure sure so uh, in the end i would just like to say jo beet gaya us kal ko hum theek nahi kar sakte par aane wala kal hamara hai aur isme hum zarur jeetenge on that note thank you so much stay tuned for tomorrow's session thank you thank you